What's poppin' my peeps, how's it going? My name is Burke Cullinane, and today we're gonna talk about storing or backing up your files, footage, photos, whatever you're doing. No, it's a little bit of a boring topic, but something that is super, super important. So without further ado, let's get it going. Storing and backing up your files. I mean, this is something that is really, really important especially if you're a creator, especially if you're a freelancer. So the first thing I'm gonna say before we really start diving into this is that it's really important to understand that if you're doing video or photo or any sort of creative field, I think it's really important to not have your files on your computer. The less files that you have on your computer, the better performance you're gonna get. I highly recommend that the only thing that you try and have on your computer would be the software, the system, the operating system, and then the applications that you're using. Everything else should be on an external hard drive. It's just gonna help you out a lot more. It's gonna help your computer run a lot faster, a lot smoother, performance, workflow, everything's just gonna be more efficient. There are a ton of different systems and methods that you can use to back up and store your files. I feel like there's, there's four that are the most common and these are the four that I use. So we're gonna go over those first. And then after that, I'm gonna give you guys a few recommendations on setups that you can use, some budget ones, some more expensive ones, I'm going to leave some links down in the description for everything that I cover I'll also leave a few extra examples from other manufacturers that I don't personally own But manufacturers that I've used in the past or have experience from other friends using them So those are the recommendations that I'll leave down in the description below You're gonna see a lot of G technology from me and that's just because I've been using their products for a long time. I just, I really enjoy them. And because I've been using them for so long, I just continue to use them. I like to try and stick with one brand if I can. The first option is the cheapest and most common option. I guarantee a lot of you probably already have some of these. That's going to be these portable hard drives. Now, more commonly, you'll see these as spinning disk drive. There's a regular external hard drive, which has a spinning disk in it, and then there's a solid state drive, which doesn't have a spinning disk in it. If you go larger in storage size, they may cost a little bit more, but pretty cheap. 40, 60 bucks, a terabyte, that's, I mean, that's a decent amount of space for, for that price. Now this one's USB 3, you could get Thunderbolt 2 or USB-C. USB 3 is probably the most common. I think we're starting to see a lot more USB-C. The difference in all of them is, is basically speed. USB 3 is, is, is a little bit slower than the other two. USB-C is gonna be the fastest. So basically the most up-to-date connection is probably going to be the fastest. So these are gonna be the most common that you find. And you could probably get one of these now up to like four terabytes at this point. So you can get a lot of file storage in a, in a little guy, which is, which is great. The next step up from those are still portable drives and they're still spinning disk, but they're these travel hard drives. The most popular one I think that's out there is probably that Lacia Rugged Drive. I have a G Technology one. Like I said, I just use a lot of their products. What this one is, is basically it's a regular, you know, portable spinning disk drive, but it has this extra layer of protection around it. The big thing to understand about spinning disk drives is that Say for instance, we talk about a CD player or a record player. If you bump that record player or CD player while it's playing, while it's spinning, you're going to scratch the disc, which usually means that you're gonna ruin the information. And in this instance, for a spinning disc hard drive, that could cause a hard drive to fail. So you really want to be careful with the spinning disc drive. If it's plugged in, you shouldn't move it. Uh, you want to be very careful with them because you could ruin the information that's on the disk. And if you are traveling a lot and you're bringing a hard drive with you, this is going to have a higher chance of failing rather than this one because this could still get bumped the wrong way when it's in your backpack, whereas this has that extra layer of protection. These aren't that much more expensive. It does depend on what drive you get, what manufacturer. I think the Lacia Rugged Drives are a bit more expensive because they're just, they're really built to be rugged. I mean, it's called the Rugged Drive. But the difference between these two, I think this one was 80 dollars and this one was 60 and they're both a terabyte so just a $20 price difference. I could be wrong, I could be mistaken, but they're just a little bit more expensive because you're getting that extra layer of protection. Now the last type of portable hard drive are going to be solid state drive. So I have this 500 gigabyte uh, G technology drive. It's a solid state drive and it also is USB-C. So it's, it's honestly my fastest drive. 500 gigabyte solid state drive and a terabyte regular drive. This is double the price compared to this and it's half the file size. They are more expensive, but they're faster. They're more reliable. Honestly, 
I recommend these over over these portable drives. Just better efficiency with your workflow and then obviously not being a spinning disk drive, there's a little bit more reliability to a solid state. So the next option that we're gonna talk about is a more stationary solution. For me, I noticed they run a little bit better, they're higher performance, and the reason is is because you actually need to power these. You need to plug them in in order to use them. You can get a lot more storage in these. These are, these are four terabytes, but I think you can get up to like 10 or 12 terabytes. The first external hard drive that I ever got like this was a Western Digital MyBook, but like I said, personally, I just kind of prefer G technology, so I have a few of these guys, and I like them because I can stack them on top of each other. You can do that, I guess, with the Western Digitals. It does take up a little more surface area, so I just feel safer stacking these on top of each other and I also I also like the build quality of them and, and just the look. This is a great edit drive. It's also a great backup drive to use. I feel like the portable drives are almost the temporary solution or an edit drive where this is a more permanent solution depending on how you're backing up or storing your files. Now these obviously are a little bit more expensive. They are double the price compared to these. But the funny thing is is that this solid state drive, it's only 500 gigabytes and this is a four terabyte. It's USB 3, so it's not it's not USB C. This is USB C. I know these two drives aren't too far off. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think they're the exact same price. The reason is is because this is still a spinning disk. These are still spinning disk drives. They're not I don't know if they make solid state drives in those yet. I could be wrong, could be mistaken. I'm sure somebody probably has them. I think you should always have a portable drive, but if you do a lot of office editing and you just kind of edit in your office, I would probably recommend this over this. The next option that we're gonna talk about is the most expensive for actual hard drive storage. Now the prices in these will vary. It really depends on what kind of system you get and how much storage you have available, how many bays are available in your system, all that jazz. What I'm referring to is a RAID or NAS. I don't know everything about computers. I just kind of know what I know from experience, but correct me if I'm wrong in saying this, not every RAID is a NAS, but every NAS is a RAID. The difference between the two is that a RAID just hooks up to your computer. It's just hooked up right to your computer, just, just like these drives. Whereas a NAS is a network storage solution unit. What you actually do is you hook it up to your network. So it hooks into my router and I can access the files through my internet. The reason that I went with a NAS rather than just a RAID is because I want to be able, if I need to, to access the NAS wherever I am. So if I need to upload or download files and I'm across the country, I now can as long as it's on, hooked up to the network and good to go. Now these systems are a bit more expensive. They are a little bit more of an investment and it took me a little while to get one of these. If you are doing any sort of client work in any way, shape or form, highly, highly recommend you get a RAID or a NAS. The reason being is because the system creates redundancy in itself. I have a four bay system, so I can put four hard drives in, I can take them out, I can put them in. I actually had to buy the hard drive separately. Let me actually grab them real quick, I'll show you guys. So this is what goes in my system. It's a Seagate Iron Wolf, it was built for NAS. It says Iron Wolf NAS. And my system that I have has four bays, so I can put four of these in there. I only have two right now. The way I have mine set up is for RAID Zero. And basically what that does is like I just explained, I have two six terabyte drives in there. So you would think, oh, you have a 12 terabyte storage system. Well, I actually don't because whatever is on that first hard drive automatically gets mirrored and duplicated onto that second hard drive. So it's a system that backs itself up. So say for example, this hard drive went down. It failed, it crashed, I lost all the information on it. Well, I still have the other hard drive in there. So what I could do, take this out, go buy a new one, put it back in, and the system would actually rebuild itself because of how I have the system configured. Now the price on the unit that I have on just the system itself without the hard drives, I think was just under a thousand dollars. And then I did have to buy the hard drive. So I spent around 1200 bucks on that system. Another great thing about that is, you know, you can take those hard drives out. So if I wanted more storage space, I could put more in because I do have two extra bays available. And also you could buy larger hard drives. The last method that we're going to talk about is more of a backup solution and that's going to be some sort of cloud service. The service that we're going to use for our business is Dropbox. They have some business options available and the option that we're going to be looking at for our business is actually an unlimited option. So we get unlimited file storage but the one thing with that is you pay per month per user and the minimum of users that you need in order to purchase it would be three. It's $25 per user per month so if you have a minimum of three users, it's going to cost you at the least $75 per month for unlimited storage. When you think long term, it's very important to not only have physical backup, but digital as well up in a cloud. So 
I recommend that. It's not something that if you're just starting out, you necessarily have to look at right off the bat. But long term, you will need to think about that. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Just want to let you know that the links in the description are affiliate links, so if you use them to purchase any of these products, I'll receive a small commission and no extra charge to you. So with all that out of the way, now let's hop into my recommendations on what you should be doing in configuring a setup and some options that you can consider when backing up and storing your files. The way that I'm going to go about this is I want to... I guess show you guys where I started. So you kind of know where I'm at right now. You know I have all these hard drives. You know I have the NAS. You know about the cloud service, all that stuff. But let me show you guys like the beginning, where I started. So the first hard drive that I ever bought was this G Technology hard drive. And you can tell how old it is because it has Firewire. That's how, <laughs> that's how I connected this thing to my computer. It's only 500 gigs, but back then file sizes were a lot smaller, so you could actually store a lot more files on here. But this was it. This is where my files lived. There was no backup. It was, it was here, and if I lost them, then I was kind of screwed. Then I would fill up this drive, and I would then purchase a terabyte drive, this Toshiba one, and I would do the same thing. Files would live on here, wouldn't back them up anywhere. It, it wasn't smart. I would not recommend that at all. But then once I filled both of these up, I started to understand that I needed to look at something that was a little bit more of an investment, something that had larger storage size. So that's when I went with the uh, the Western Digital My Book. Maybe a few months after using this that I started to realize that, well, I could just dump everything that's on these two drives onto this drive, and now I can start creating redundancy in everything. So what I would do is I would put everything on here and then edit off of these drives. Once a project was approved and completed, like 100% done, paid for, sent out the final copy, all that stuff, I would actually remove the files from either one of these drives knowing that I still had it here. Again, not really the smartest option because if for some reason I ever needed to get that footage again one day and that drive went down, well, I wouldn't have a backup. But that's what I did with Open Project. Now, the reason that I did that is because usually with a lot of the work that I do, a lot of the music videos that I do, I don't need to access those files once it's completed. So that's why I did that. I, I really wouldn't recommend that, especially if you're doing weddings. Definitely don't do that. Definitely make sure you always have a backup of your stuff. And then from that setup, I began to purchase these guys. And basically, I would have two of these and I would edit off of one and back up on the other one, but I wouldn't ever remove the stuff that was on this one. So I would have the files in two places at all times. And then from there, RAID and now cloud service. So that's, that's where I'm at. Right now, what we're going to be doing is we're gonna have edit drives, and then we're gonna have the RAID, which has redundancy in itself, so we essentially have two backups there, and then we're gonna have the cloud service. So you essentially have footage in four places, and I'm going to start looking at buying more of these because they are very fast. I, Like I said in the beginning of this video, if you are going to buy any of these drives, if you only have the budget to buy one, and you wanna drop a little bit more money on a safe, reliable, and fast solution, get a solid state drive. I'm, now I'm kind of all over the place here. I'm talking about all the options that I'm kind of using at this point in time. But what about an option for you? What if you don't have the budget to spend all this money to spend thousands of dollars on storage and backup? The cheapest option that you can go with would be these portable spinning disk drives. Now what I'm going to recommend is if you are going to buy these, buy a few of them. Buy at least two of them and have your files stored in two places. Three if you can, but two for a start, that's good for a temporary solution. Another option that you could consider is maybe you want to spend a little bit more money and make just a little bit more of an investment for you in the long term. What you could do is you could buy one of these and another one of these, and every time you fill this up, you just buy a new one and all the files are backed up on here. I mean, the biggest piece of advice, the biggest recommendation, the biggest thing that I want you to take away if you're here watching this video trying to figure out how you should store and back up your files is just to have them in multiple places at all times. That could honestly be having an edit drive here and then a RAID. And you have redundancy in the RAID, so it is nice knowing that there's redundancy there. So essentially you're having files in three locations rather than just two 
and every time this gets filled up, you just buy a new one. That's also a great solution. If you guys have any questions or need any clarification in regards to anything that I just covered in this video, please let me know down in the comments below. There really is a lot of information that comes with this conversation, so if, if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. All right, my peeps, thank you so much for watching. appreciate every single one of you guys. If you like this video, hit that like button, leave a comment down below, smash that keyboard, subscribe if you aren't already, ring that bell, and stay hungry. Peace! Run the outtakes. I know a few guys, bleh, we're just gonna hop right into this, I don't even care, I'm not even talking about that. Just my recommendation from the experiences that I've, I've, that, 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 that. Ah, I need water. Water. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Words are hard sometimes. If you guys have any questions or need any clarification in regards to anything that I just covered in this video, please let me know, please let me Joe, please let me know, please let me know. I feel like uh, Bruce Almighty in that. Steve Corral from Bruce Almighty. You know what I'm talking about.